January is a drowsy month in field and woodland. Tucked up in secluded nooks, the hibernating creatures escape the cold winds and sleep on till gentler days arrive. Nature, however, is not asleep, but ever active, making preparations for spring, her busiest season. Soon the result of her unseen labours will be shown in the reawakening world. February At this season, when the trees are stripped of their leaves and stand looking grim and bare in the frosty air, it's interesting to study their reactions to the cold weather and find what steps they take to protect themselves in the winter. The author shows us the woods in February and gives many useful hints whereby we may recognise the different trees. March March is a month of laughing and crying, when one moment the skies are gentle and sunny and the next the wind is chasing the rain over the earth. This harem scarum variability in the weather is not so difficult to bear when we realise it is a farewell gesture to winter and that the balmy days of spring are approaching. April April is a busy month. Birds are building their nests with an industry and skill that fill us with admiration. Butterflies try their wings when sunny days entice them to visit the flowers and blossoms spring up everywhere. The last dull remembrance of winter fades and a cheerier note echoes through the woods, for a new era is at hand. May May is a month of brightness, when wild flowers make the hedgerows gay and the birds are full of merry song. The nightingale carols blithely at this time, leading the bird chorus by day and warbling alone by night. Some butterflies attempt to appear and make an early flutter against the flowers. May is, in truth, a merry month. June June is the month when fragrant roses are at their sweetest and when birds forsake their gay life of singing to take to the graver duties of parenthood. The woods are full of young fledglings chattering excitedly as they try their wings for the first time. The author takes us through this interesting month in a very delightful manner. Though the full measure of summer's charms appears to wane at the approach of July, the more mature beauty that follows makes this month very pleasant. Flowers are still abundant and the air has lost none of its fragrance, but the volume of birdsong is diminished and many feathered visitors are preparing for their winter journey. August August is a month of golden corn and ripe fruit. Fewer flowers are seen and the bird chorus becomes weaker, but the activity in field and orchard proclaims this is a month of fulfilment. Insect life is abundant and reptiles enjoy the dry warmth of August days. Towards the end of the month, preparations are made for winter's inactivities. Our author opens with a quotation from John Keats' poem, Typifying Autumn. The whole poem might, with advantage, be read, to be followed by an enjoyable reading of the following chapter. For September is one of our loveliest months, with its rainbow hues and tints, its satisfying sense of fullness and plenty, and misty mornings and evenings. October. In October the artist's fingers itch to be busy with brush and paint, for nature has spilled her loveliest colours over the woodlands, and the monotonous green has given place to an enchanting range of shades. Though winter is lurking near at hand, her introduction is so colourful that few sigh to think that the sunny days have slipped away. November. November is reckoned a month of grey skies and biting winds. There is less activity in the woodlands, where the drowsy creatures have begun their winter sleep and the flowers have withered after their brief lives. Other wild creatures, however, put on their winter garb and defy the cold, and feathered visitors from overseas begin to arrive. December December is by no means a dismal month. The wind may be biting cold and the trees dead and bare, but there are many cheering influences at work. A few birds remain to brighten the snowy air with their song, 
and a dainty Christmas rose appears to show that all beauty is not dead, though the year itself is fading to a close.